Hello and welcome back to the garden. I have a plan. You've got a plan. I, I have I have part of a plan. I don't even believe you have a plan. What percentage? About 12% of a plan. It's barely a concept. Well, I think I have more than that. Obi-Wan, how much, what percent of a plan do I have? 94. 94% of a plan. Shut up. You had me at hello. This is garden therapy. Today we have a topic that's not only essential for cultivating a thriving garden, but also for living a fulfilling life. Power of planning. Regardless of which part of the garden that I'm in, I feel like I'm surrounded by beautiful nature, which is the perfect backdrop to discuss the importance of planning. Just like in gardening, planning plays a crucial role in our personal lives. Let's dig deep into why planning is the root of success. Before we dig deep, please don't forget to hit that like, subscribe, and hit the bell for notifications. Thanks. In gardening, having a plan is like laying the foundation for a bountiful harvest. So here is how it parallels life. So number one, setting goals. Just as we decide what plants we want to grow, we must set clear goals in life. These goals act as our seeds, which we nurture and watch grow over time. Number two, fight on. Choosing the right plants. Let's choose, choose wisely. We spoke about this in a previous video on if I'm gonna grow those plants again. Well, you wanna choose the right plants for your climate and your soil, which is crucial. Our three factors were productivity, taste, and vigor for our climate. Similarly, in life, we should make choices that align with our goals and our values. Number three, creating a layout. Gardens have a layout to optimize growth. I have an example of this right behind me. This bed right now runs east to west. I wanna switch it to run north to south and changing that layout is gonna help optimize the growth of my garden. Likewise, outside the garden, planning helps us organize our life to maximize productivity and happiness. So let's explore some benefits of planning. Number one, having a plan reduces uncertainty and stress. It's like having a map when you're lost in the woods. It gives you direction. Number two, having a plan increases efficiency. Planning allows us to use our resources wisely. It gives us a heads up on what's gonna be needed to be successful down the road, just as a well-planned garden conserves nutrients and water. Number three, adaptability. A plan can be adjusted as needed. Just like pruning a plant, it can be adjusted to life's twists and turns. And knowing that your plan is not set in stone is very important. That gives you that flexibility to be adaptable as your life changes, as the ability to use certain resources may change, as the environment around you changes. You have the ability to change your plan as things move forward. You're not locked in. Remember, the plan is there to guide you, not to confine you. Now let's talk about how to plan effectively. A lot of people have heard of SMART goals. Well, you gotta make your goals specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and time-bound. With the garden, the timing part is easy. There's certain times where you wanna plant your plants and have them grow and be successful. You also have to do that in life. This is what I use for my garden planning in life and in, in business. It's not much different with spreadsheets, documents, PowerPoints, etc. Here in the garden, I have my two notebooks here that I use to draw layouts of the garden and where each plant's gonna go. Also record how those plants are doing and what plants I did end up planting at the end of the year and how many of each one. I do do all this in pencil so I can stay flexible and change things as needed as the year goes on and as my mind changes during the planning phase. Create to-do lists. Break down your goals into smaller tasks. I know a lot of people that get a lot of satisfaction in completing a task. So crossing them off as you go feels like harvesting a bunch of little victories. And number three, use tools, whether it's old school by writing it down or specialized app to keep track of your progress. Now I'm gonna be doing some planning today. As you can see behind me, I have a garden bed that runs 
east to west, getting a little too much sun during the day, especially in the, in the heat of the summer. I'm gonna turn that bed to run north and south, which is how I have most of my beds configured in the main garden. And I think that will help them, help the plants shade each other out as the sun goes across uh, throughout the day. Also, I need to do these changes so I can have a good start to my fall planting season with my leafy greens and uh, root vegetables. So this will help keep them a little bit cooler this time of year, and I think it will ha have great results. So that's the plan for today. We were able to turn the bed and get it all situated. Next step is to take this bed. This is a six by three, and we need to cut it down to a three by four. Put the cattle panel arch over it and put it behind this bed. So here's the finished project in the garden. And as you can see, again, that moved the bed from east to west to being a uh, north and south configuration. So everything's more in a line versus uh, the where it was before. Now, the nice thing is now I have about three feet of space on that side. I had to turn sideways and squeeze through between the leaf bin here and the garden bed and then on this side i went from about three feet to five feet distance which is nice a lot easier to get by the nice thing about this configuration from here all the way back to there it's a little more than 11 feet which is the exact same distance as it was before except there was a little more space here i did move the bed forward about two feet it allows me again to walk around fairly easily and have access to everything now if there was a, a fail during during this process, it was the alyssum. I couldn't save the alyssum little hedge that was created, uh, but um, I was able to transplant one that did survive which is right here. One thing about sweet alyssum, it is super prolific. So if you do plant it, be prepared to have it forever, forever, forever if you're in a place that doesn't freeze like I am. Um, although this one looks like it is dead. It's only mostly dead. And not going to make it. It would take a miracle. I did find, and there you can see a little sweet alyssum coming up. That life uh, finds a way. So it will self-seed and this soil, the amazing thing is with this soil, I took all this soil out and put it back in. Eventually the sweet alyssum, the seeds are here. They will reseed itself. It will grow back. We'll just be able to wash away that, that epic fail in time. So I'm very happy in, in regards to how this plan came together. Uh -huh. Plan I was able to save some of the pepper plants in the center, get a couple more weeks out of them and hopefully get some of these green peppers to change uh, to yellow or red. And we'll just go from there. And the pollinators are still loving uh, the basil aspect before we switch things over to the fall garden at the beginning of October. So thanks for joining me today. If you found this helpful, please don't forget to like and subscribe, hit that notification button, and please share the video with somebody you think will get a lot out of it. If you've missed some of our past videos, I'll link some of them here so you can have a watch. Thanks a lot, and until next time, happy gardening and planning. Have fun storming the castle.